Hello, welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. As you can hear, is once again the rising event. But this time, we're in Limsa Luminza. Ah, the minstrel's here to guide us. Rising to the core. Of all the coincidences, you will hardly believe it, but I was just this very moment reminiscing of the time you lent me your strength a twelve month for past. You see, I again find myself impressing need of an adventurer's aid, just as I did last rising. Oh, if only lied of where I thought to myself, and here you are. Well then, what do you say? Shall we clasp our arms once more? My thanks. The matter is this. I have been approached by a lady named... Uh, uh, I... I... Uh, what... what <laughs> hmm, that name. <laughs> well, that's a stumbling block. A, a yo-yo, I guess, maybe? Who wishes to imprint her own immutable mark upon the skies above Limsa, the Minza. I speak, of course, of the fireworks that illuminate these rising nights. Learning of my contribution to previous year's festivities, she has enlisted me to her cause. We already have the ear of the organizing committee. However, Lady Ayoyo has expressed a strong desire to consult with a storied adventurer before finally uh, finalizing a proposal. Come to the Yellow Jacket's guardhouse at the base of the Coral Tower, and I will introduce you. Oh, there you are. Okay. Lady Yuya, one storied adventurer has promised. Hey, she's got the earring. Blessing of the Twelve upon you. Name's Yuya, Canada first class with the yellow jackets. It's an honor to have you on board. Did I mention that it is the Yellow Jackets who are in charge of this year's festivities? Not only in decorating of these fair Lamenzian streets, but in designing and constructing the fireworks that brighten the skies above them. Lady Ayuyo here is quite a, a savant in all matters incendiary and explosive, and so has fallen, upon, fallen to her to formulate a plan for the display's crowning glory. Me and the other lads. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I've done. I've done the voice now. Me, me and the other lads and lasses of the cannoneers whipped up a load of lovely. Wait, he already says lady here, yeah. Okay. Me and the other lads and lasses of the cannoneers whipped up a load of lovely little drakes, snakes and devils for the Moonfire Fair. But more of the same ain't gonna cut it for the ri rising. Cause it's all about remembering those we lost in the calamity, ain't it? Them and theirs deserve something I might specially -er than a bunch of old bangers. An admirable sentiment, I'm sure. It would not do for our ode to such poignant memories to be all less than memorable. Let us make this year's rising one that the citizens of this fair realm will not soon forget. So the words right out of my mouth, dearie. The thing is, having hardly set foot out of Limsa in all my days, I don't reckon I'm the best place to know what's going on through the minds of the citizens this fair realm. A 
And so you would pick an adventurous prince, one who has journeyed far and wide across the land we love, and knows it and its people intimately. Yet before we call upon your particular wisdom, may it would behoove us to seek out a wider range of opinions. Many and more look to the skies come rising night, and the thoughts that run through their minds are no doubt as diverse. Let us learn. Uh, let us learn them. Sounds like a plan. Mind if I join you, dearie? Could do of learning some of the thoughts myself. Right then. What's the best place to ask him around? Some place with all of outsiders gather, I reckon. How about we meet at the Aphrodite Plaza, down on the lower decks? While well, you two are so engaged, allow me to continue our discussion of the organising committee. I shall wait you by the Alf Castle. See them lights down Orca's Alley, dearie. Decorations for a festival, they are. Every year, when the streets are all decked out in the rising, Mia feels, well, uh, all kinds of feelings. Sorrow, pride, regret. But enough about me. We came here to find out how the other folks feel about it. Let's split up, head down the alley, and ask a few likely-looking customers each. We're on our schedule here, so don't go asking every single soul you see. Four or five should do it. I'll meet you down at the ferry docks when you're done. Welcome, welcome. Or well, may I interest you in this fine day? Ah, information, is it? Well, if you really must know, the whizzing and banging that fills the air this season always takes me back to the time just before the calamity struck. A great festival was how to celebrate the reformation of the grand companies. People on the streets were hooting and hollering and setting off fire spouts. And all the ships in the bay, now bedecked in the maelstrom colours, loose their cannons. Seems so foolish now. Then what we what soon befell was all. The Lord of Noise served a purpose nonetheless, driving out the fear that ever whispered in their ears. It is my firm belief that the rising fireworks serve the same purpose even now. They present a vision of lo uh, loveliness and togetherness. And we might forget our fears and be given hope for a brighter future. This supposed to be another one here. The streets are full of life, the sky is full of fire, and the westerly wind of uh, of filling the seafarer's seals as it does our uh, it. What? Filling our seafarer's sails as it does our, oh, our hearts. <laughs> hearts. Ah, I could have picked a better time to come. You're a sailor too, are you? Helping with the fireworks, you say? Good on you, lass. Aye, I have a few memories of back then, if you've been here to hear them. I'm a merchant seaman, you see. Always sailing, ever in. Fiver across the waves, 
We've just back from a trip to Radzohan when the calamity struck. Everyone was looking up to the sky and a loathsome lantern that hung low in it. Like most folk, I don't remember much of what happened in the days before or after. It fell, but I'll never forget those faces. And that's why I love so much about the fireworks. I see the same faces looking up, but this time with a smile. Reminds me not only of the bad times, but how we got over them. You can see him too, my love. You're involved with the fireworks and want to know what I think of them? Well, just now I was wondering if they can be seen from far out in the offing. Do you know? I see. The reason I ask is that my husband is out there now. He meant to be back by rising night. But it seems the tide didn't turn in his favour. He was so looking forward to the fireworks. I do hope that he can see them from where he is. And we can share them together, no matter how far apart we might be. That is my only request to you. Do you make the finale as bright and boisterous as you can? That to all those who cannot be together this rising night, still share in its message. So where's the offing? Alright there, uh, anything I can do for you? You're asking for people's thoughts on the rising fireworks? <sighs> Would have thought a great hero like you would have better things to do with your time. But I suppose that's what makes you a hero, eh? Helping people out whichever way you can. Well, unlike most people, I suppose, I think of those I lost. My parents, most of all. I wonder if they're watching it too. Swam up from the bottom of the ethereal sea to see what all the crashing and banging's about. It's complicated, I suppose. I feel sad they're gone, but happy I'm not. And grateful to Baldron, saving me and so many others. If they are watching, I hope they could see me too. See that I'm doing all right for myself, and that they might sleep soundly for another twelve month. So yo yo is down the dock. Oh, okay. Well, wait for them. Sorry to keep you waiting, dearie. So what did you find out? So we gotta make it really bright and loud. A lot of people are um Well Remembering those who they lost. Hmm. The same here. I was half expecting them to just like looking at pretty lights. But it seems the feeling runs a lot deeper than that. The memories of the calamity still sit heavy in their hearts. But the rising fireworks go some way to lifting their weight. Is there any ideas for the grand display? What kind of thing do you reckon would help lift those spirits the most?
something that gives people hope. Hope for the future, eh? That ain't a bad idea. Reminding folk that however dark that night, dawn is just around the corner. The rising ain't just around mourning those we lost. After all, it's about remembering the struggles of those who survived to steer us to a brighter future. Aye, that's it. That's what Limson needs, this rising. Ships, cannons, a departure salute, not just for the fallen, but for those setting sail for the unknown shores. A vision of the past and of the future. An old bleeding armada filling the gallows and bay, lighting up the very heavens. Who, would want, who wouldn't want to watch that? That's settled then. Ah, the Mitchell's going to love it. He said he'd be up by the half castle, right? I'll see you there. So it makes her a big, loud, bright and flashy. Our intrepid adventure returns. And positively bursting with inspiration, I take it. I see. A traditional seafaring salute. Not only to the memories of the fallen, but to the future fortune of those who follow in their wake. A most fitting proposal, I'm sure. Thanks to the both of you, but our work ain't done yet. There's a lot needing sorting out before we can put this idea into action. So much to do, so little time. If you wouldn't mind helping us a little longer, dearie, I'd be forever in your debt. Let me know when you've got your loins good and gir girded. Is it a puzzle? To those who are about to set sl wait, what? Is that the thing? Oh, we who are about to set sl sail salute you. I guess I can put the um, comma there. Right then, let's get started, shall we, dearie? The plan is we're going to line up an old fleet of ships across the bay and have them fire a broadside into the sky. But before we go about finding our fleet, we need to get the plan approved by the organising committee. And that means convincing Commodore Rayner. I'll take the lead, but I ain't exactly got the silverest tongue, nor much experience nobbing with the liar, the, uh, the higher ups. If you do see me struggling, put a word, won't you? Of course, my lady, who causes ours. Thank you, my dears. Together then to the Coral Tower. She speaks like she's really old. It's feeling like ironic that she talks about not being able to speak to the higher ups and not having the silver as the tongue as I stumble over the words. Last I had the privilege of meeting with the Commodore was around the time of the Calamity. I had been arrested for conspiracy to incite rebellion. Naturally, it was all misunderstanding. Some other scrutinous soul had been singing songs of sedition. If not for Rainer and his relentless pursuit of the truth, I might still be lingering in the brig. He is a shrewd investigator who will brook no equivocation. Shall we then? Have we 
we met Reyna before? Hmm. I'm not sure. Wanting to make the rising display special, I can fathom. But the sheer scale of this proposal is beyond anything I imagined. Hey, yo, yo. Need I remind you that the first duty of the Yellow Jackets is keeping of the peace? Filling the bay with ships will not only disturb the daily workings of the harbour, but it sure is to foremost agitate, uh, be sure to foment. Oh, it's not foreman. It's foeman. Agitation among the commons. Knowing this, do you still mean to uh, persevere with this outlandish plan? I do, Commodore. Uh, Commander, even. Not Commodore. Every Lemesians are. Every Eotians are. Still bears the scars of the calamity. All I lost. The hardship, the struggle, they cut deep. But the rising ain't just about looking to the past. It's about looking to the future, too. And if it's our duty to watch over folk, keep an eye on the stream straight and narrow, like, I reckon it's our duty to see him off on another year's journey, too. Well put. I accept that your intentions are pure. But what is the logistics? I trust you have a plan as to who exactly will be providing and paying for this fleet of yours? Yes, Commander. We're going to petition the Maelstrom for the flagship. And the rest from, uh, the Black Sails? Of course, one is wont to forget that those buccaneering souls remain bound to serve the Maelstrom in times of necessity. Lady Ayoyo would have us parley with the three great pirate captains and remind them of their civic duty, it seems. Uh, aye, that's right. The pirates answered the Admiral's call back when the moon was falling, fought and died at Cartano. Same as the rest of us. When they hear about our plan to salute all those who fell, and all those who didn't, I don't doubt they'd answer the call again. Hmm. I wish you all the luck in the world in recruiting those rogues to your cause. You shall need it. Very well then. Allow me to arrange the parley. Should you succeed in this feat, we can see all my remaining doubts answered. I bid you remember that you go speak with the pirates. Lawless marauders will pray that you do not say or to offend them. Unless we find ourselves with a mutiny on our hands. I shall have the maelstrom summon the leaders of the three factions to the Yankee Yard. Pray go there and complete your preparations. Cheers for sticking with me, you two. I hope I can count on your support in the next set of negotiations and all. Of course, my lady. Alas, I fear the captains, whose far-famed scourges of the seas, will prove rather less biddable partners than the Commodore Rayner did. While Rosewin of the Sagwine Sirens may be swayed by emotion, Carvelin of the Kraken's Arms is of a much more mercenary mind. Executioners, meanwhile, value honor and glory above all else. If there is all that unites them, 
It is a zealous spirit. Let us argue with passion that we might inflame theirs. If it's passion you're after, I've got that in bleeding bucket loads. But I might need you two to jump in again. In case my tongue decides to tie itself half in it. Alright, in an. in a half inch? Just say the first thing that comes into your heads, and I'll pick it up after. Come on then, dearies. Let's head over to the Yankee Yard and get this party lay started. For she said party for them for a second. Okay, let's do some pirate negotiation. Well, we know Roswin is a sweetheart deep down, so she'll help us. Probably won't take too much convincing. Thanks for coming. The reason we asked you here is... Aye, the Maelstrom summons laid it out for us loud and clear. You want us to help you with the rising fireworks. And the answer is no. When my sirens fire a broadside, it's to send iron mees to the bottom of the briny. Not to paint pretty pictures in the sky for drylanders to go at. We've better things to be doing with our time. It's of rare occurrence to be sure, but I find my opinion aligns with Roswin's. Our time is precious. As I am sure is yours. Let us hasten to draw these discussions to a close. I shall put it bluntly. I see no profit in this endeavour for myself and my men. So unless there is anything else... Keep a boy with Roswin. Uh, I can't remember it. Like, Rosalind was after someone, but I can't remember who it was. I don't think it was him. But, yeah, the Admiral and the Yellow Jackets in your debt. Yeah, I think now, I think that would pique his interest. A debt of gratitude, perhaps, for providing the men and material for this pageantry entirely at our own expense. I saw no mention of the Krakens being compensated for our efforts in a material sense, or am I mistaken? The sheer scale of the spectacle we propose would no doubt draw all the lords and ladies of the realm together in the city, personages of high renown and deep pockets. Aye, and they, they, they saw you lot working, and, and with the maelstrom, it would do wonders for your public image. Folks who normally wouldn't touch a pirate with a barge pole would be queuing up to do business with you. I do believe you have a point, poorly phrased though it might be. To win legitimate business, one must protect the image of a legitimate businessman. Sod your image, and sod anyone who's too lily-livered to trade with us. They can stick their barge pipes, uh, their barge poles, up their backsides. What's in it for the sirens? Is it cover lane that she's into then?
She doesn't care about bringing joy to him, does she? The cover line? We really want to be together? Think of it, Rosalind. <laughs> yes, we've got her. What are you trying to imply? I'd rather cut my ass off with a rusty cutlass than have to spend another minute in the preening peasant's company. Me and my girls are proper pirates. The Sanguine Sirens aren't all about the pirating life though, are you? You run aim houses for the sick and injured, and those with child. Keep themselves busy with odd jobs, such as come their way. Them's your uniters. Wait. Well, what does that mean? Them's your hunters. Hunters? I'm not sure what she's trying to say. And the folk who've drawn to the city to see the grand display, your quarry. Ah, I see where you're going with this. Get the girls to set up s stores selling food and grog and the like, and they'd make a killing, providing they'd add all the right permits from the yellow jackets. A shrewd one, you. Maybe I could lend him a hand myself. They do say the best way to a man's heart is through this stuff. <coughs> um. Roswin, one day, Ward of the Executioners, there is no dishonour in linking arms of the Admiral, Merle Webb and the Maelstrom, surely. You, Yellow Jacket, I want you to tell me one thing and tell it true. This is Limbs of the Minza, the greatest port in all the realm. You could find this fleet of yours without our help. Yet you've come here begging for it. Why? Because... Because I reckon you're the ones who need the rising most. Black sails only came together because of Cartano. You could have upped and anchored and sailed off into the sunset, but no. You fought like demons on those cursed flats, made heroes of yourselves, and martyrs. The way I see it, it's the only right that those that lost the most when they stood to gain the least, should be the ones to fire the salute to the departed. And a salute to the departing too. The calamity changed the lives of your pirates more than anyone. If anyone should be celebrating new beginnings, it's those whose new beginnings already begun. So, it's all for our own good, is it? I'm heading back to the uh, Astelicia. Some word when you're when you've hammered out the details of the display in yours, and we'll see what we can do. Aye, aye, Captain. I'd like to say no to you now, can I? Uh, we lost a lot of good pirates back in Cartano. Let's send them out with a bloody great bang! I will join you on one condition. 
that in your reminiscence of trauma past, you do not make a shameful spectacle of yourself. Pray, do not force me to restrain you. Again. I... I've never forced you to do nothing. You'll keep your hands off me if you want to keep them. You randy bastard. Quite the fragile flower, isn't she? Well then, I bid you adieu. My ships will not ready themselves. Oh, it's always heartwarming to have the pirates involved. Which is funny, right? They always come across as like, Oh, we're so hard. We're so dangerous. Best not mess with us. But, you know, they're so damn wholesome. <laughs> oh, the Yu-Yu's over here. And... Breathe. Oh, God, I was so nervous. I could hardly speak. Thanks so much for chipping in when you did. Because I've never gone on our side of value, huh? Right then. Time to put the finishing touches to this plan of mine. It's going to be wonderful, I just know it. And about your reward. I've given you to the minstrel. You can grab it from him. To new beginnings, lass. And may the navigator's breath ever fill your sails. Ah, he's right by us. You did a great service, my friend. Both for Lady Ayoyo and for all those who love the rising. Myself included. For that, I shall be ever grateful. I expect it shall be still some, some hours before the preparations for the grand finale are complete. Mayhap we could wait together? While we wait, would you care to hear a verse as lately come to me? It is a song of celebration, of encouragement, for all those who sail for the unknown shores. Pray, lend me your ears. Greetings, warrior of light. This is a world that exists outside your reality. Could it be a dream? A flight of fancy conjured by your weary mind? Perhaps. Or... Perhaps not. Did 
is a pleasure to meet you again, as I have in the past. I have beckoned you here that I might express my gratitude. The road we have walked has been long and winding, full of perils and pitfalls, but we have enjoyed every step of your company. We hope that you feel the same about this last great leap. With every adventure we undertake, the longer the legacy we leave behind us, yet a lengthy history need not mean a foreshadowed future, or a foreshortened future even. Many adventures yet await. We shall continue to chart our course into the great unknown. One that takes in all the diverse wonders this wide world has to offer. The your legacy might grow even greater. To be certain, it would be a less trying task to sleepwalk ever onward down the same well furrowed path. Yet to venture down paths untrodden Believing in the bright and glorious future that lies beyond them is by far the more rewarding. This is a gift that we wish to deliver unto you. The gift of adventure. And we pray with all our hearts that you will continue to walk with us we thank you for joining us on this journey, heretofore and hereafter. Now, the time has come for this vision to end. Time for your eyes to open from this waking dream. One cannot know what fills the hearts and minds of those who took to the sky this rising night. Perhaps you and I will see very different images in those explosions of light and colour. One thing I know for certain, that right there, right now, we look to the same sky. And though the paths that lay ahead of us may lead in very different directions, some time, some place, they shall cross again. It is almost time for the display to begin. The consummation not only of our labours, but of the force and prayers of the people of this fair city. A salute for the departed, and for those who set sail into unknown waters. Many adventures yet await you, my friend. May the navigator's breath ever fill your sails. From eastern sea to eastern sky, the sacred sun ascends, and voices stir of wind and waves, of ropes and sails and friends. We will like the golden light of dawn that streams across the sea, 
Set sunset sail for foreign lands. May fortune follow thee. A journey done, so sinks the sun below the western waves. And memories stir of friends and yore, asleep in watery graves. Yet not our voices raised in song disturb your endless sleep, but join us in our chorus, and you'll dream among the deep. An excerpt from an ancient mariner's song. A prayer for the safe return to those who sail over the far horizon. And for the peace of those who sleep beneath those same eternal waves. It concludes with a wish. For the voices of those whose spirits are stirred in anticipation of new adventure will reach the ears of those who whose adventures ended too soon. They might be united as one. A fitting sentiment for the rising, methinks. And so I offer you my own heartfelt wish that even should your adventures carry you beyond the far-flung horizon of this wide world, we should once more, in the twelve months' time, and look up to the same sky together. You have unlocked the toy chest. Open the toy chest found in an inn to play mini games. Pretty sure I unlocked this a long time ago. Additionally, certain notable personages have been seen to frequent the anchor yard this rising. Do the same, and you may be greeted with an unexpected encounter. Oh? For Eleven's sake. We got Cryo. Where is she? On the occasion of the anniversary of Iotzi's rebirth, the Adventurers Guild commissioned a new mammoth designed in Cryo's likeness. With the hood of her Pictomancer's attire drawn back, to reveal her precious earring, she exudes a spirit of adventure and discovery. I'm eager to put my pictomancy to the proof. That earring. Uh, if I can sit down. Oh, she's a bit further away than I anticipated. So this is Little Cryo. Well, Valdo, I think I've, I've only ever seen her with the hood on. So she's a Pictomancer? Was she always a Pictomancer? And we just didn't know. So is there something special about her earring then? Because why would they mention it, revealing her earring? I guess at some point we're going to learn about that. It 
So we should go perform an animation. Cute. I don't know if that's the only animation she does, but that was cute. Okay, so who else is going to be here? Oh, whoops. A soft westerly wind blows across the anger yard. Yeah, let's enjoy the sea breeze. You have footsteps approaching. You turn and see. What do you see? It says free. What does the Admiral last? So we're going for the proprietor of the drowning wench. Forget me old pal Lilith. Here to beg the old bird for guidance too, are we? What is that name? Shadob? Shadobsby? Said you had an... You... You had an ad in this year's... Oh, you... Jesus Christ. The way they write it. Like I know you're trying to put, you're trying to write an accent, but I mean it probably makes sense in your head when you're doing it, right? But to read it, it it could be just garbage, like the name. So uh, yeah, she, I think I think it's I think she's a barmaid, right? Said you had an, a hand in this year's fireworks. No bad job you made of them either. You, you met her down at Hawker's Alley, right? I sent her to pick up some stock for the wench. But do you know what she brought me back? Only a bottle of bleeding Bacchus. Paid for it out of her own pocket, she did. To thank me again for saving her life. Oh, I guess it's very expensive. I thought he was, at, he was mad then for a second. But apparently that's a, like, a great treat. Don't know what you said. Uh, I don't know why she's so well, hung up on it, but the girl paid me back a hundred times over. And all the hard work over the years felt a bit bad accepting it, like. But, well, a bottle of Bacchus is a bottle of Bacchus. I reckon it's you we should be thanking, anyway. For your marvellous display, you could get me a bottle of Bacchus. <laughs> all the ships in the harbour. The fire in the sky brought back a lot of memories. Some good, some bad, but every one of them well worth remembering. And we ain't done making them, making them, yeah? You'll be off on your next adventure soon enough, right, Wager? Well, you can't be rightly be striding out on an empty stomach, now can you? Come to the wench when you Come to the wench and we'll fill your belly. Lila's like, oh, you don't need to do that. So kind of you. Why? Hey, Chef! The boss! Well, well, well. I came to feel... The millions breath on my face. I need to find the faithless besom whispering in the ear of another. Have you been keeping Lilith? You've got you to thank for the rising display. I hear you has been singing your praises from Fisherman's Bottom to the Coral Tower. What? Surprised? I know her. Limbs, oh, surprised I know her. Yeah. Limbs is a small place, lass. Hardly a day goes by, don't see a yellow jaguar several in the Bismarck. Whether it's t 
to stop the finest food and wine this side of the sea, or to clap the irons on those who've tapped the casks a touch too personally. I suppose an adventurer like, your, like you might have noticed, always coming and going as you are. Oh, might not have noticed. But stick around in the city a while and you'll see. The jackets ain't the axes for ire. They are true friends of the common folk. Ayoyo was a retainer before the calamity struck, you know. And a master of a thing for fireworks. Every time they came back from the wan their wandering, they'd load up. Oh, they'd load her down with an underway of sp spouts and spinners they picked up from God knows where. Day and night you'd see her down at the Margaret Ward, beaming that sunny smile of hers at every passerby, trying her damnedest to flog the stuff. Enjoyed the work, I reckon, but then Dalamud fell, and she lost her master. Literally lost him. The way she tells it, it were the calamity burned and all in her memory, and they fell straight through. Couldn't remember their face, nor their name. But she never forgot the fireworks. The amount of gunpowder that went up, went through her hands over the years. She couldn't help a, help learning a bit about making things go bang. An apprenticeship with the cannon as later, and she was a yellow jacket. So when I heard they were the ones who'd be put in charge of the rising display, I knew she'd be the first to volunteer. The rising, the fireworks. They mean a lot to her. And as a friend, they mean a lot to me. So thank you. Well, the thing is, you might not have just lost the memory of them. It might have been way more tragic than that. She just doesn't want to remember through trauma. The Admiral herself. Lilith, this is a coincidence. Marina was just telling me of the role you played in putting the display together. I'm sure all those who gathered in my city to witness it were as moved as I. A salute to all those who set sail for the new adventures. It shall surely, his, surely resound in their hearts and give them strength and courage in the year to come. And a salute to the fallen too, was it not? Many and more will lost their lives in the fields of Cardano. The men and women of the Black Sails, chief among them. I thank you for giving those who survived them this chance to put their grief to more productive ends. I thank you for giving the celebrations an unmistakable touch of salt too. This year's rising was not merely in Limbs of Lominza, but of her. I look forward to seeing how future host cities follow our example. But for now, let us focus on the present. I'm sure I have kept you from your business far too long already, and I must return to mine. I must offer my prayer to eliminate and be on my way. Fare you well, my love. I wish you safe voyages for the year to come. May the navigator's breath ever fill your sails. Oh, it's a shame because we're a maelstrom. We should be able to salute Merrillweb. But we cannot. It is a shame. Does everyone, right? Let's see if that is a... Um, Special one. No, okay. Oh, 
Okay then, well that was the rising. So I think her, her waving her brush is all she does. Do I not have Pet on here anymore? I do not. Um, is it just Pet? Oh, she waves. She just waved it. Uh, let's try again. Uh, sometimes it works with poke, right? Mm, that didn't work. Well, yeah, it seems that what she does is a brush. There we go. And that's cool. Cryo is adorable. It's a cute little pony's tail. I guess that's possible for the hairstyle when she takes down the hood. Yeah, I don't know why I mentioned about the, um, the earring though. It's weird. I look forward to finding out what that, if it ever comes up again. But by the time I ever get there, I'll probably have forgotten all about this. Well, thank you very much for watching my uh, escapades in the Rising. Hope you enjoyed the Rising event, and I shall see you again for more Final Fantasy XIV soon. Bye for now.